Hey there, this is Tyler from WTFX. Today, we're talking about the camera lens blur and all the complexities involved with it. Let's dive in. Camera lens blur. The camera lens blur was made to be able to replicate the look of the natural blur that occurs on footage when shot with a physical camera. Basically, here is some footage of someone talking. See how the background is out of focus and the person is in focus? Well, those blurred areas, as well as the bokeh, are what the camera lens blur is trying to recreate. Now, you may be thinking, why can't we just use one of the other blurs available in After Effects? Why should we even bother learning about this one that seems exceedingly complicated? Well, first, there are certain out-of-focus areas that take specific shapes, called bokeh. They cannot be recreated with other blurs. And second, if you would stop interrupting me with your inane thoughts for just one moment, you would see that I would come to this topic naturally, so just calm the f- The first option we have is blur radius. It defaults at 5, which adds a subtle blur. The higher the number goes, the blurrier it gets. The lower the number goes, the less blurry it gets until we get to zero. The next section we have is called Iris Properties. This section controls most of the look of the blur as well as the look of the bokeh. If you're not familiar with how cameras or lenses work, you may be asking yourself, what is a bokeh? Bokeh is the aesthetic quality of the out-of-focus areas of an image, or it's how the lens itself renders the out-of-focus points of light basically these things. You'll notice that the first control we have within this section is shape. This dictates the exact shape the bokeh will take. To understand why there are different shapes of bokeh, we first need to understand how the iris of the camera is made. The iris itself is made up of various blades that say how much light is allowed into the lens of the camera. The more blades the iris has, the more round the shape of the bokeh will be. This is why sometimes you'll see a perfectly round bokeh, this means there were quite a lot of blades involved, or some that are more, well, hexagonal in shape. This is because there were less blades involved. This control defaults at hexagon, and when we zoom in and look at those bokehs being created out of those background lights, you can see that we are in fact forming a six-sided shape, Wikipedia claims is called a hexagon. When we click on the dropdown, you'll see that we have more options for shapes, including triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, Octagon, Nanagon, and Decepticon. Wait, that's not right. Sorry, Decagon. Yes, the, I'm sorry, that's right. Decagon. There, there are definitely no, no Decepticons involved in the making of this video. <laughs> Next is roundness. Roundness takes the shape of the bokeh and makes them more, well, rounded. The default is zero, leaving us with the shape established, and goes to 100, which gives us an almost perfect circle. Aspect ratio allows us to stretch or squash the shape established. It defaults at one, but the higher the number goes, the bokeh and blur stretch horizontally to better match the look of anamorphic footage. However, the lower the number goes between one and zero, it will squash the blur and bokeh as seen here. Rotation spins the bokeh shapes to the desired direction, and diffraction fringe will create more of a halo effect by lowering the opacity of the center of the shape. It defaults at 100 and maxes out at 500. After iris properties is blur map. Blur map allows you to use another layer to control which areas of the image is affected by the blur. Blur maps always work best with a black and white control layer, but really you can use anything. And if you need a quick explanation of maps, be sure to check out our video on the compound blur. But for the purposes of this explanation, I'll first use a solid and apply a gradient ramp to it. But in order to use this solid layer as the blur map control layer, we need to select the first drop down for layer here. It defaults at none, but you can see that it does give us options for this image of the street as well as the solid layer we just created. When I select the solid layer, you'll see that nothing happens. This is because the solid layer itself is black, and as we know from working with mats, black does not allow the effect to show through. However, we want the camera lens blur to look at the gradient ramp effect being applied to the solid, not the solid layer itself. This is an easy fix. We click this second drop down here and change it from source to effects and masks. Now we can see that the image is being blurred according to that gradient ramp, with the area that was black not being blurred, and the area that was white is now allowing the blur to show through. The next option we have is channel. Channel allows us to choose an alternate way to affect the layer. For this explanation, we're gonna bring back the old favorite Sir Eyes Cat Newton. Yes, yes, we're excited about it too. When we click on the channel dropdown, we are given the choices of luminance, the three color channels, red, green, and blue, as well as alpha. Placement gives us two options, center map or stretch map to fit. Center map gives us what we see here. The blur is the exact same size of the image of Sir Eyes Cat Newton. 
However, if we want this blur to move to the edges of our composition window, we simply need to select stretch map to fit. And now you can see it does in fact stretch the map to fit within our entire composition. Next is blur focal distance. This allows us to fake a rack focus across the footage. Boiled down to its most simple explanation, this simply swaps the blurred and unblurred areas. As you can see, when we turn this up, the areas that were in focus are now starting to blur, and the areas that were blurred are coming into focus. If we click on the Take Snapshot button, you can see that we can do a quick before and after, and in fact, they are inverting. But what if we want to fake a rack focus of this guy on the moped driving towards the camera? Easy. For this, we're going to switch the blur map layer back to that solid with the gradient ramp. We're going to need to change the second dropdown to effects and masks. As you can see, we are now back to having the blur gradually fade off. However, as we turn up the blur focal distance, you can see that we are in fact moving part of the image that's in focus towards the other side of the frame. This is because the part of the image where there was black was in focus. But because we understand by now that the blur focal distance essentially inverts this, the in focus part will travel across these various shades of gray until it reaches the other side. Speaking of inverting the blur map, the last control we have in this section is invert blur map. This looks at the layer we're using as the blur map and, well, inverts it, basically turning what was white into black and vice versa. The next section we have is highlight. This section controls the bright values of the image, which will in turn affect the bokeh that we create. We have three options here, gain, threshold, and saturation. The first option we need to talk about is threshold, because threshold is essentially the gatekeeper to the entire highlight section and how it affects the layer. Its default is set to the brightest setting, meaning that only the brightest, purest white areas will be affected. Gain is what makes the highlights brighter. It defaults at zero, meaning that there is no change, and tops out at 100. If we change this to 100 right now, you'll see that nothing happens. This is because the image we're using is a night shot, which means that there are no pure white highlights. In order to see any change right now, we're going to need to lower the threshold a bit. Well, now that we've lowered it and we turn the game back up to 100, you'll see now that those highlights, as well as the bokeh, have gotten much brighter. But what happens if we turn the threshold down to zero? Well, now you can see that the entire image looks blown out, but this also means that we've lost all of those beautiful colors in the original scene. This is where saturation comes into play. Saturation is there to bring back the color we lost by increasing the gain setting. And just like gain, it defaults at zero and maxes out at 100. As you can see, when we turn it back up to 100, it does in fact bring back the beautiful colors of the scene. Now bear with me, we're going to do some playing here for the sake of explanation. Going back to what I said about saturation only affecting the areas changed by the gain, let's change everything back to their default settings. When we turn up gain, again there is no difference because as we know the threshold is too high for this image. But with the gain at its max setting, we're going to change the saturation to its max as well. Well again, nothing happened because the gain isn't affecting any part of this image. Okay, so let's put the saturation back down to zero and partially lower the threshold. The image has in fact become brighter, but we've lost some of the colors in these orange wires here. Once we turn the saturation back up, it's now visible how these colors are brought back. Repeat Edge Pixels allows us to hide the edges that are revealed at certain blur levels. If we turn the blur radius up to 100, well, it blurs the edges of the image to where they're not even visible. And now we can see that gradient ramp below the layer. By checking Repeat Edge Pixels, the blur pixels themselves are carried to the edge of the frame. The final setting we have is Use Linear Working Space. What this does is preserve those natural highlights occurring in the image. Because the nature of blurs is to spread out pixels in a specified direction, it's very common for highlights well, to become less bright. And as you can see when we do check this box off and on, it's only affecting those highlights as well as the bokeh to preserve those bright values. So whether you like the ability to recreate a rack focus or the ability to manipulate the highlights of your footage, I think there's one thing we all can agree on. No matter which shape of bokeh you choose, nothing will be Decepticon. Thanks for watching. I am so sorry for what you just watched. See that big red subscribe button? Definitely don't click that and don't hit the bell icon either because doing either of those will let you know when we upload new content. And you see those two clips of the other videos that we made? You don't want to check those out either. Just steer clear of them. In fact, what you may even want to do is, is just shut down your computer. If you live near a canal or a river, maybe even take the computer and just throw it in one of them.